Every year on the first Sunday after Easter, we get this lesson, and it's the Doubting Thomas lesson. But I really love this lesson because it also gives us the very end of the Gospel of John. Now, you may know that there is a John 21, but a lot of people think that that was written a little bit later, and that's where Jesus is helping them fish, and then they come on the shore and they have fish tacos for breakfast. But this right here is John 20, and... uh, If you remember Pastor Don, she preached a fish taco sermon, and it's stuck in my head ever since. Uh, So uh, uh, John 20, though, at the very end of it says, this book was written so that you may come to believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, the Son of the living God, and in believing, have life in his name. And that's where the gospel would have ended. And that's a really cool thing. Now, by the way, the you in there means like the plural, like you all... Now, in Texas, we would be saying, y'all, that's right, that's right, so y'all believe in his name. Uh, so this was written on purpose. If you look at our lesson today, it says at the e- it was evening on that first day of the week. This is still Easter Sunday. Jesus rose that morning. So let's go back a little bit and talk about this whole coming to believe, because John is doing something very particular here with Mary and Peter and and, and Thomas and all the disciples about coming to believe. They've followed Jesus all over the place. I mean, all throughout the gospel, he's done all kinds of signs and wonders and miracles, and people have been raised from the dead, and he's fed people, he's touched people, he's, you know, fulfilled prophecies, he was crucified. So all these things have happened. They certainly should be believing that Jesus is going to rise again. They've seen all these things happen. But early that morning, on Easter morning, Mary makes her way to the tomb. And in the Gospel of John, she looks in, and he's not there. And so she runs and goes to get Peter, because she thinks somebody stole him. And so she goes to get Peter, and they both go to the tomb together, and they both look in there, and they're like, he's not here, somebody took him. And Peter goes off. Now, there was another disciple, the one that Jesus loved, and that's kind of like us, because he peeks in, he knows what's going on. But Peter takes off, and Mary sits there, and she's weeping, and she's crying at the entrance of the tomb. And then she looks in, and she sees these two angels, one at the head, one at the foot of where Jesus would have been lying there, and they were just playing spades. No, I'm just kidding. She looks inside there, and she sees these two angels, and they go, why are you crying? What's wrong? And she says, I'm looking for Jesus. He's not here. Where is he? She still doesn't believe. And then All of a sudden, she turns around, and there's this person behind her. And we know it's Jesus. And he says, why are you crying? I'm looking for Jesus. If you know where he is, tell me so that I can go and be with him. And then he says, Mary. And she sees him, and she comes to believe. She's in the presence of the Messiah. And so he says, go tell the others. So Mary does. She goes running off, and she tells all the others, he is risen! And he's so excited. And then we come to the night where we're at right now in our reading. And there they are up in the room. And they're having a party because Jesus is risen. And James and John are on the karaoke machine. And there's balloons and confetti everywhere. They're so excited. That's not what's happening, right? Because they're not filled with joy. What are they filled with? Fear. Yeah, they are afraid of what's going to happen to them because of what happened to Jesus. Even though Mary has just told them that he is risen, they're like, oh. And then Jesus appears in this locked room and says, peace be with you. And still, they're not there yet. And then he shows him his hands and his side. And that's when they come to believe that they're in the presence of the Messiah. And then he blows on them the Holy Spirit, and he gives them the Holy Spirit. And we'll come back to the Holy Spirit in a minute. But there's somebody that wasn't there in that upper room. Who was it? Thomas. That's right. And the next day, they're telling Thomas, he has risen. And Thomas is like, I don't think so, guys. You know, I don't know if I believe this. Um, I I, I need to touch him. I, I, I need to touch his hands, put my fingers in the holes, and I need to touch his side, and then I'll believe. And so a week passes. Interesting. There's Easter Sunday, and then The Sunday after Easter, there they are again, up in a room together, and Jesus appears. And he says, hey, Thomas, give me a high five, right? (laughs) 
And he says, touch my hand, touch my side. And Thomas comes to believe. And Jesus says, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. What is he talking about there? What does it mean when we believe things that we haven't seen yet? Faith. Faith. I heard a great illustration about the difference between believing and faith. Okay? So you've been to the circus before. You've seen the person on the uh, high wire act, and they're walking up there. And you watch them walk, and it's so cool. You're like, this person has trained for a long time. They, they worked on this their whole life, and they're up there walking, and you believe they're going to make it across. If you don't believe and you want them to fall, you're an evil person. But no. So you're watching them walk, and you believe that they're going to make it across. And then they go to the other side, and then they put somebody on their shoulders. And you're like, oh, this is great. They're going to walk across with somebody on their shoulders. And you go, here they go. And they go across, and they make it all the way across. And then they get on a bicycle, and you're like, oh, wow, they're going to cross on a bicycle. And you're excited to watch it because you believe they're going to do it. You're like, oh, that was so cool. And then they get a wheelbarrow, and they put the wheelbarrow down. And you're like, oh, my gosh, they're going to walk across with the wheelbarrow. So believing is that they're going to make it across with the wheelbarrow. Faith is you getting in the wheelbarrow. Does that make sense, right? <laughs> Martin Luther, in his third article to the Creed, says, I cannot, by my own understanding, come to believe in Jesus Christ or have life in his name. I can't even believe in Christ without the Holy Spirit who calls me, enlightens me with gifts, and keeps me in true faith. They were given the Holy Spirit for this true faith. They can't do it on their own. They can't come to believe on their own. And now they've been given the Holy Spirit to help them believe, to give them that true faith. And the whole thing that happens here, the really neat thing is that it continues to happen even today. Did you notice that Jesus shows up on Easter Sunday morning and Jesus shows up on the first Sunday after Easter? And I'll be darned if Jesus doesn't keep showing up every single Sunday since then, right? And he shows up right here, right now, to us who wrestle with belief, who wrestle with faith. And he shows up in the waters of baptism as we make that sign of the cross on our forehead and remember that we are children of God. That we've been marked to that cross of Christ forever. We've been claimed and named. And Christ shows up in the bread and the wine where his body is broken and the wine is poured. And we are part of a new covenant in his blood. And that we... Take this unto ourselves, and lo and behold, we become the body of Christ. And then we get to go out into the world and share it with others. And I just lost my spot. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and end this by saying, Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. And believing is indeed really, really, really true. Amen.